Are you depressed? Do you worry too much? Do you need to take off some weight? Well, don't worry. Be happy. These are some of the keys to better health, according to my guest this morning. And he should know because he was a pretty sickly young man himself one day. Nordine Zwareg is a fitness coach at Maribel Life in the Balance Spa in Tucson, and he is the author of Mind Over Body, The Key to Lasting Weight Loss is All in Your Head. Nordine, thank you very much for being with us. Um, thank you. I, I told you before I started taping, I, I uh, had the occasion to, to fly back east recently, and I, and I read the book. It is a fascinating book, and as we were joking about it, it reads quickly because there are lots of pictures in it. I uh, want to talk a little bit about some of the things that, that you've written about in the book. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mentioned you were a sickly child. Where were you born, and what was going on? Well, Bob, uh, it's a... It's a uh, a story that uh, I have to heart and every time I say it uh, to people I have to go through. So I'm going to try to be uh, myself right now and not too emotional about it. Um, I was born in the back of a truck, uh, a French uh, army truck, in uh, the middle of the Sahara Desert. My parents were going to the uh, uh, independence of Algeria and um, I was three months old, three months uh, premature, sorry, um, when my mom gave birth in the truck. She was 15, year, 15 years old at the time. And uh, in, my, in the truck were my father, my mom, of course, my grandpa, and my grandma. The only person who had uh, enough courage to uh, actually help my mom deliver was my grandfather. He actually told me that he cut the uh, cord with the, uh, a little small rotten knife. <laughs> and. Uh, um, Three hours later, uh, I found myself in the hospital, um, and um, the uh, doctors told my mom. My mom stayed overnight, and uh, uh, they told her that uh, I was uh, dead, that uh, she had to go on and uh, move on, and uh, she would have a lot of, a lot of other kids, which she, which she did. And uh, she really didn't believe that I was dead. So she asked the doctors to bring me back. She wanted to claim my body and uh, the doctors basically didn't want to to let her take me back because they truly thought uh, in their mind that um, I wouldn't make it and a 15 year old uh, kid uh, would not be able to uh, take on the challenge of raising me so um, my mom went to see uh, the police uh, uh, and um, asked the police to come and reclaim me. So that's what they did. They came back to the hospital. And um, the doctors brought me back. And uh, the question was, why did you lie to us? And uh, the doctor said, well, we did this because we truly think that uh, he's not going to make it. So that's how I was born. And the story brief br briefly uh, uh, taught, you know. Now, it was later determined that you had rickets. Yes. How did you finally get the medical assistance that you needed to at least stabilize this fragile youngster? Well, uh, my parents, uh, being tribe people, uh, didn't really have uh, um, the means to, uh, to get me to the proper medical attention in Algeria. Uh, so the only uh, thing, the only option they had left was to collect some money from the tribes people and g get um, tickets to go to France. And so that's what they did. They, uh, they flew to France and I uh, remember traveling, uh, as my, said, my father always said to me, uh, from the trip from Algeria to Paris was fine because the ticket was free uh, for me <laughs> as a baby. But the trip to from Paris to Roubaix, which is the town where we, we lived in, um, was not free. So the only option for my father was to hide me in his pocket. Mm. And uh, that was my best trip, <laughs> two and a half um, hours in, uh, in a pocket. We, um, we got to France and uh, my parents seek m m medical attention. I was in and out of hospitals for two years, mm. period. Um, and uh, my parents not uh, being able to uh, to uh, pay for the uh, for the uh, medical uh, bills, uh, they they seek seek the med uh, medical help. 
My father had two jobs, uh, and it was really, really challenging for them uh, to get me proper medical attention, but they did, and that's why I'm here today. <clears throat> at what point, at what age, did you come to the, to the realization that, that you, Nordin Zwarig, can begin to take control of your physical body, your mental body, et cetera. Where did, where did, where did this epiphany occur? Well, uh, Bob, when you go through what I've been through, um, the low self-esteem, the, the, the challenges that I've endured, uh, the bullying at school, you know, it's, it's kind of a learning experience, you know, f until age uh, 19, um, I, I, I always thought, you know, deep down that I was, you know, uh, not worthy of anything, that people could beat me up, people could take my lunch, people could uh, lock me in the in bathrooms and, 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 and tell me to stay there until the school day's over. Um, all of these challenges really taught me a lot, um, and, and that's why, you know, I, I started uh, to, to question myself, and, and, and since I couldn't find any help uh, outside of myself, I said to myself, well, the only, the only person that could really help me is me. And so, hence, uh, trying to, 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 to find the time to sit within and, you know, at that time, I really didn't call it meditation. I didn't call it anything. All I knew is when I sat and went deep down and, and questioned myself and, and listened to the answer, uh, my heart was telling me, really, I felt good. I felt fantastic by just doing that a few minutes a day. So it started basically with meditation. It's, you were sort of thinking things Absolutely. It, it, you know, and again, I, uh, I didn't know what I was doing back then. Uh, I call it uh, uh, being... Uh, uh, unconsciously competent uh, and uh, so to me really the 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 the, the, uh, the discovery came when I came back from school one day uh, same thing you know all uh, depressed about myself and and uh, what happened that day at school I went into the house and saw everyone all my siblings watching a program on TV and uh, I looked at the, the screen, and uh, there I saw a gymnast uh, doing the uh, Iron uh, Cross. And I, I didn't know what happened back then. But then I, I started to understand the process, which is what I write uh, in, in, in Mind Over Body. I felt like I fell in love with that body. And immediately, I asked myself, why not me? Why can't I become just like that? And so, just asking that question, I paid attention to the feeling that I had. I felt an enormous excitement uh, uh, seeing myself achieving that. Again, seeing myself achieving that body. And feeling the feeling inside of me, that excitement immediately anchored that desire in my subconscious. How does this work for you? We'll talk about that and much more as we continue talking with Nordine Zwareg, the author of Mind Over Body. And this book is available wherever books are sold, and it's a fascinating read. We'll be right back. Don't go away.